Erev Tov Kharim. My name is Stephen Ben Danun, and you're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, we are here in Jerusalem, and we are just about ready to get things off and going here. Uh, finally got a place that, where we can operate out of, and uh, glad to be able to report that. There is a lot of things happening in the news today, uh, and I want to thank some friends as well that have taken the time to bring some of these to our attention, as well as uh, event emails that we get periodically anyway from the people that uh, some of the issues that we'll be reporting here today. Um, we have here, John Kerry has been in Israel here today. Uh, he left here today to go to, uh, I think it was Brussels. But uh, yesterday, on Monday and Tuesday morning, John Kerry was meeting with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu discussing uh, the arrangements for the release of the last batch of 26 Palestinian terrorists. Uh, yes, I still call them terrorists. Uh, last night, on Monday night, we had uh, local Israelis here that were that had lost loved ones to these uh, terrorist uh, assassins of Israeli citizens. Were protesting at the uh, at the hotel where uh, John Kerry was staying at uh, here in Jerusalem. And I wish I would have known myself; I would have been right there with them. I didn't lose any loved ones there, but in 2004. On September 22nd, I was nearly killed by a Palestinian suicide bomber uh, here in Jerusalem myself. So I can certainly uh, console and condole uh, or feel for the people that have lost loved ones uh, due to terrorist attacks, such as that these Palestinian terrorists uh, that are being released. I can only, in, in, in a small way, I can only understand what they must be going through. I didn't lose any loved ones as a result but I know what it's like to go through that blast and the feeling that you go through, something you'll never forget as long as you live. Um, anyway, though, uh, the meeting that, uh, that was discuss discussed was the possible release of Jonathan Pollard uh, from the United States, who's being held uh, in prison in North Carolina. And uh, it, the, the negotiations for his release as a as part of the as part of the deal for releasing the final 26 uh, prisoners, uh, the Palestinians are reporting that the prisoners will be released within the next 48 hours. Now John Kerry is due back in Israel uh, tomorrow, and he will be speaking with uh, Mahmoud Abbas uh, over in Ramallah concerning this to to finalize the deal. Now the Israelis have agreed to release the last batch of 26 prisoners and as well as freeze construction in the West Bank. Now, this does not count East Jerusalem. Uh, in exchange, they would they are, are, are demanding that Jonathan Pollard be released. Also, it's reported today that Jonathan Pollard refused uh, the, the parole hearing that was granted for him uh, in protest to the releasing of the, of the terrorists here in Israel. Uh, certainly, if he is released, I don't think he should be paroled, he should be freed, and he should be received with honors, and no doubt will be received with honors here in Israel uh, for standing for the Israeli people. It is sad that the United States looked at, looks at this as spying when the United States should be giving Israel anything and everything she has need of for her protection. Uh, but anyway, that's my opinion on the matter there. Anyhow, though, we have, uh, besides that there, what's going on in the world uh, over here in Israel. Um, we have also that, uh, or let me, something that was sent to me by a friend of ours back in the United States, uh, Sister Mary Skogibo, sent us a, a, some information on a news article there that our news program she was watching, and I felt that I should really read this to you. It's very important. Um, she said, I was listening to a program last night, and they said on November 29th, 2012, the United Nations, in one of, uh, of, of its resolutions, ordered Israel to divide Jerusalem and give the east portion to the Palestinians for the capital of their state yet to be formed. According to this program, this is already a done deal in the UN, and it occurred on November 29th, 2012, and escaped much of the world's attention. What is going on now is working out a time frame for the transfer of the deed um, from Israel to the Palestinians. So uh, this was very interesting to find this out. And the, the sister did not mention, uh, at least I don't, did not see it in the email there. Uh, uh, I believe, well, she does mention here, um, 
I don't know if that was on the five does, but no, I don't think so, because she's watching an actual program to see this, but she did not mention the name of the program in her email to us there, so I'm not able to uh, corroborate that information. Uh, something, though, that you guys have brought to my attention, and, and I actually get the emails from Lori Cadoza Moore. Uh, Lori Cadoza Moore sent us an email today speaking about the Vatican trip that, that, that she is giving an audience at the Vatican. Now, Lori happens to be a friend of ours as well, uh, although I am very concerned uh, uh, with her with her efforts with the Vatican. I, now, I, I say concerned. I believe that Lori is doing a noble thing and trying to get the Vatican to speak against anti-Semitism. Uh, and but unfortunately, the Pope, the the greatest enemy Israel has ever known, is Rome, and uh, and still is and will be until God delivers us from the Roman occupation, just like it was when Yeshua was here on the earth. Rome was occupying Israel, and again, she's occupying Israel once again. In fact, uh, when we were downtown in Israel today, or down near the, uh, uh, the old city, just outside the old city, they, they built a brand new shopping center area. In fact, it was under construction when I was here 10 years ago. Well, right in the dead center of this beautiful modern shopping center is just a tremendous sized Catholic church with uh, a statue of the Virgin Mary there. So I can only assume in this case here that the Catholic church is what funded such a lovely uh, center there in Israel. Uh, well, that's their way of trying to court the Jews. Uh, nonetheless, we're going to get ourselves in a lot of trouble by making a covenant with the Vatican. Let me read to you the letter, though, that Lori sent me. It says, I'm excited to inform you about the historical events uh, PJTN is working on at, uh, at the UN this month. First, I was notified last week that the Most Reverend Bishop Brian Farrell, Secretary of the Pontifical Council for the Promotion of Christian Unity at the Vatican in Rome, has agreed to hear my petition to discuss the Pope's assistance in petitioning His Holiness Russian Patriarch Krill to formally disavow the protocols of the elders of Zion. Now, there again, understand, and if my friend Lori were to watch this, Lori, sis, you just have to realize that's, that's like playing with the devil himself. And I know Lori doesn't want me to say these things, but it's the truth. When we look at Ezekiel, and we see in, in uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 35, clearly the Vatican's intention in this two-state peace process that's going on between the Palestinians and Israel is to take both of the states once they're formed, Palestine and Israel. Isn't it kind of ironic that today, that the United Nations, or excuse me, the United States generals meet with Israeli generals concerning peace and security of Israel. Now, Israel has never allowed a United Nations force here, although there are UN, uh, there are UN uh, observers here in Israel because of Palestinian issues, but we've never allowed a foreign force on our, on our soil. And yet, I see that way starting to make its way here. Why? The Vatican is going to make sure that their little watchdog police group from the United States is here to cause havoc in Israel. Anyway, kind of going on with Lori's letter here, let me go back to that. We will also petition Pope Francis to request his assistance in my efforts at the UN to encourage Christian members, member states to do likewise. Uh, we will, um, I don't have to tell you that this is a tremendous opportunity and a large step in PJTN's efforts to expose and confront global anti-Semitism in general, Christian anti-Semitism specifically. The fact that Bishop is willing to, to bear our petition is a miracle in and of itself. For one, I would never give him the courtesy, never give him the courtesy to call him the most reverend bishop. It's all of an antichrist spirit. And the Pope, Satan will actually incarnate him. That's coming. It's a serious hour that we live in. Let's wake up, let's look up and recognize redemption for Israel draws nigh. 
and all of these type things here. All of these efforts, though Lori's effort, I know her heart. She loves Israel. She loves Israel with a passion. But unfortunately, this is definitely not the way to do it. I would protest the Vatican and everything about it. The United Nations, every bit of it, I would protest it to the last dying breath I had in my body. Because it's nothing but an antichrist system. It's Satan's way. It's Satan's way to be able to enforce what the Vatican's decisions are. And yeah, you get a little audience. Sure, the Pope may say, I'm against anti-Semitism, and Lori may even find that it's a great thing that they speak up and do the things that they do. But unfortunately, my sister will end up waking up when she realizes their intentions are not the intentions of God's. And when it comes to Christianity, they're a far cry from what true Christianity is. In fact, if anything, Israel has, we know from the, from the, Last, or from 2,000 years ago, when the ecumenical, or excuse me, the, um, from the Sanhedrin, the high priests, when they condemned Yeshua, which we were there today, right there at the very steps where Yeshua walked up to the Temple Mount. Excuse me, not to the Temple Mount, but up to Caiaphas' house when he was being escorted. He was being brought as a prisoner to be judged by, the, by Caiaphas, the high priest. And then taken over to where? the Romans, to be condemned to death. I mean, is it not odd that all these things are happening right now here in Israel? Here we see the negotiations for Barabbas to be released, the spirit of Barabbas. But in the case of Israel, one Barabbas was released and the innocent was condemned. In modern days, now the Gentiles that represents was supposed to be genuine Christianity is crying out for over 100 spirits of Barabbas to be released. It'll backfire on you. Then you will see as Israel, because of one demonic person was released among them, it was a spirit of death that was set loose on the Jewish people and from 70 AD onward, nothing but bitterness, not only the fact of dispersion throughout the nations, but then that death spirit followed our people everywhere we went. Well, now the Vatican, the quote-unquote religious hierarchy of quote-unquote Christianity today, now you cry out for your Barabbas to be released. Imagine what will happen to Christians that are left behind. Death will strike like you've never seen before. Also, we hear a lot of earthquake reports coming out of California, uh, a lot of prophetic warnings as well uh, about earthquakes and judgment striking America. I can only imagine what's going to happen to the United States when Israel is divided. I'm Stephen Bendenoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live.